All right, so I think that you all should come check out and read this blog from Menden iPad Rehab, written by Jessa Jones, on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus Touch IC failures. So I already did a video explaining this. Uh, I actually fucked up in my explanation since I opened, you know, one iPhone a month, as you guys know, for data recovery, if that. Um, so, but she better explains the issue than I did. Uh, the one now she explains what goes on, and it's really, really good here. So if you 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 really should watch that first video on the iPhone 6 Touch IC if you don't understand it. Long story short. A lot of people that have had any type of stress on their iPhone 6, which it's a portable device, will get stress. Notice that they lose function in the touchscreen after a while. It's a very known problem. Apple pretends it's not a known problem, and they tell you to fuck off and buy a new phone at uh, 300 or or just get an out of warranty replacement at 349, which is bullshit. And you know she she does a really good job of writing this up. You know he nods. It says over here, he nods with trained empathy as you describe how the problem started with occasional loss of touch function and has progressed over time to no touch at all. With experienced hands, he deftly starts pressing and twisting your phone while parroting the company line in that voice we use when we said the exact same thing hundreds of times. Yes, we have seen this before, but Apple doesn't acknowledge this is a problem. Since you are out of warranty, we can offer you a replacement phone for $349. This is not a repairable problem. And this is where the real problem lies. I understand that Apple does not want to repair these themselves, even though they produce the fucked up thing to begin with. I also understand that they can endorse independent repair or vouch for the quality of independent repair. But to say this is not a repairable problem is a fundamental lie. I mean, unless Jess has been lying about replacing the touch ICs on his phones for the past year and a half and fabricated her video and is fabricating her entire course teaching people how to repair boards, if that's tr maybe Jess is doing that. Maybe that's what she's dedicated her 40s to after she left her career working in cancer research. But I'm pretty sure that it probably is a repairable problem and Apple's full of shit. And she goes on to explain how it is. And this is, this is the thing that really kills me. When she was talking about Bendgate, which is where the iPhone 6 will bend uh, very, very easily, Apple's own th statement on this made me so fucking sick. Our phones are designed, engineered, and manufactured to be both beautiful and sturdy. The iPhone features a precision engineered body, but this, I don't really, which is tempered for extra strength. Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, if you drop a Samsung S5, does it bend like a paperclip? If you drop a Motorola Moto G, the, 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 the cheapest shitty $200 Motorola Android phone, does it bend like a fucking paperclip that was, you know, it doesn't. But this thing does at six or $700. And it really kills me when they say shit like, uh, let's see, where is it here? Uh, the strongest glass in the smartphone industry. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, seriously, I have, an, I have an S5 that I drop every fucking day for the year that I owned it. So I had that, actually, I had that S5 for more than a year. I had that S5 from about November 2014 to January or February of 2016. I dropped that thing three times a day. I dropped it on porcelain bathroom floor. I dropped it everywhere. It is scratched, but not cracked. iPhones, I mean, it speaks for itself there. You can say that it's a better phone, the software is better, I like it better, that's great. But like, reinforced for high stress locations, titanium inserts, tempered for extra strength. You can say whatever you want, but that's all. Again, the phone fucking bends in your pocket. Spare me this bullshit. Uh, but that, that, that really kills me. But, uh, I mean, she really does a good job of explaining everything here. Like, ultimately, they don't let you... The real problem is that they don't let you know that there is that there are independent solutions. And when people actually post about it, they, uh, they shrink the post. So, you know, here's the post that I showed in my original video. Here's the follow-up post after Apple just, you know, destroyed it and, and removed all of the logic and reason and knowledge where he's explaining exactly what chip goes bad, exactly why the chip goes bad, which can be demonstrated by a fourth grader under a microscope if you give him the right tools. It's nothing that he's posted was wrong. And he's not, and then again, there are so many people that have this issue. So Jessa actually went back and print screened and copied and pasted a bunch of different user experiences where a lot of different people said that they had the same problem. So Apple says, oh, this is not a problem we acknowledge, but there are many different users that acknowledge this is a problem. And the real issue here, the real issues here are A, 
Apple continues to parrot the lie when they say this is not a repairable problem. They are, they are robbing you of your opportunity to give your money to somebody but them that will economically repair your problem, and B, they're deleting posts on their fucking forum. So look at this. Look, He describes exactly how it fails, right? Then they, they, they edit the post to remove it. And you can go back and read Mark's post. I, I annotated it and included it in my original video that I did. You can see, like, they, it, it's not like my posts. My posts have attitude. My posts often have cursing. My posts call people out. His post is polite, kind, courteous, and, and just very professional in the traditional definition of professional in that sense. And this is uh, one of the things that, that really gets me. One Apple's um, uh, ASC, I thought it was Apple Community Support, whatever. And now, one ASC regular theorizes that if Apple were to allow this content in the forum, then it could later be used as legal admission that they were aware of the problem and chose to do nothing about it. And that's the reality here. Apple is aware of the problem and they choose to do nothing about it. And that's bullshit. You know, again, when you go back to the beginning of her post, there's some good stuff here where it says that the ad, the Genius Bar people very often start twisting your phone to try to get the board back into shape so that the Touch IC will make contact, which is total bullshit. That is, that is, I mean, I would tell you to put, I would tell you to put your dead graphics card into an oven before I told you to start bending your phone to fix the Touch IC. I mean, that is, that is just really, really bad. But what, uh, what really gets me here is the fact that what really gets me is that, uh, what was I going to say here? Oh, yeah, the, the, the cost of the phone as well. So, A, they, they, they don't let people know what's going on. While not letting people go, going what's going on, they don't admit fault. They don't let you know that there are alternatives. Again, Jess is not the only person doing this. There are people fixing this thing for 100 bucks, and they're doing a good job. They got good Yelp reviews, good Trustpilot, good, on, you know, good online feedback on their Facebook pages, good karma. And, and they're not letting you know that other companies do it. And again, they don't have to say. They do, Apple doesn't have to say. They don't have to say, we endorse this third-party repair center because that opens up a whole fucking can of worms. But they don't have to say, this is not a repairable problem. That's where it's bullshit. Now, one of the areas where I disagree with Jessa I, very much, and in my opinion, this is kind of just um, an indication of her own bias as somebody that makes, you know, lots of money off of fixing this shit, is where she says, you know, it's not a big issue because this is like dog years, given the fact that this is electronics devices in constant use from morning to night and subjected to incredible daily stress. And you could read the argument that we had in my original video where I talk about that. So let me just try to find this here. YouTube, Lewis, Rossman, iPhone, Touch, I see. So she believes that, uh, that, that there is no problem with this, that, you know, the phone, you really can't expect it to last more than a year. You, sh you know, if you, got, if you got one year out of your phone, then you got what, we, you, got what you bargained for. I believe that that is the biggest b bunch of bullshit. Now, I'm not saying that Apple should have to warranty the phone more than a year. I think a year is a generous warranty. At the same time, we kind of... We kind of tiptoe that fine line where, like, at what point is it bullshit? At what point, at what point should we get angry at a company that is releasing an item that they know full well fails on a regular basis and, and does nothing about it when they're at the upper end, the other upper echelon of what these devices cost? So if my Motorola phone that's $200 dies after a year, it would suck. It would suck, I wouldn't be happy with it, but it was a $200 phone, I can't really expect much from it. When you get a $600, a $700, an $800 phone, you kind of have expectations of it that you don't have of the $200 phone. Now, I'm not saying that Apple has to beat the $200 phone in every single area. I'm not saying that at all. Wow, it's really hard to find comments here. Where is my? Yeah, here we go, here we go. So this is where we were, we were arguing this, and you can... Uh, I said, you are saying that the phone shouldn't be expected to have a lifespan of over one year, which at 600 is still crap. Many other devices that are cheaper constantly outlast this supposedly flagship device. And let's see.
it cost me two, I, like this whole, it cost me $2 a day to use it. If we get into that discussion, then everything just winds up being disposable. And then she gets into this whole thing here about entitlement. And this, this is, I think, where Jess is kind of playing on, uh, on something that we talk about all the time to try to relate. Uh, so we always talk, we talk about entitlement a lot because we deal with entitlement a lot. And the re especially with our YouTube channel. So Jess's channel gives away a bunch of free board inform repair information. And my channel gives away a bunch of free board repair information. And a, a lot of people are not grateful for the fact that we spend all of our free time filming, posting online stuff that nobody else will post. Rather, they're pissed off that we won't spend our free time troubleshooting them with their specific problems. So we often talk about the issue of entitlement. Now here, where it says... We can whine about it like entitled Americans and not just expect, but now demand things to last beyond one year. That's bullshit. That's entitlement. I think that's horseshit. See, comparing the people that ask us, like people often ask us for free information and people often do a lot. There is a lot to entitlement culture in America that sucks. There are people that expect a lot for nothing. But the thing with entitlement is that Often, when we're talking about entitlement amongst ourselves, we're talking about people who feel entitled to something in exchange for nothing. Here, I'm saying that I feel that I should have a device that lasts more than 12 or 13 months if I not only paid for the device, but I chose to pay a premium for that device over everything else. I could buy a $100 Android phone from... I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm showing my ignorance here. The highway, hui, highway, whatever the fuck it is. I could buy a $100 Android phone from them that last two years. I could buy a $200 Android phone from Motorola. I could buy a cheap phone from Samsung. I can buy a cheaper HTC Android device. There are so many devices out there that I could buy that compete with the iPhone and do a lot of the same things that the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus do. I can find a lot of these devices for less than half the price for the iPhone. So I don't feel like I'm being entitled when I say, listen, I'm not telling, I'm not saying that they should have to fix everything that goes wrong with it outside of warranty. But if there is an issue with oxidation occurring under a chip because of the of the, the lack of durability in this portable device, if there's a widespread issue where hundreds of thousands of these phones, one year after being purchased, are becoming bricks, and it's all because of the exact same problem, and that problem could have been prevented. I'm saying that they should do something about it. And I feel that I, I, as a consumer, if I decide I'm going to spend money on something, not only am I going to spend money on the product, that I'm going to spend a premium on that product when I could have spent less money on anything else, at the very least, give me the same level of durability I would have gotten in the cheaper product. Because again, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare a $40 flip phone or a $20 flip phone to a smartphone, because the flip phone is easier to make durable. It's smaller, it doesn't have as many functions. But when I'm talking $100 to $200 smartphone, I'm talking about phones that really, do, I mean, again, they may have a shittier processor than the iPhone, they may have a shittier battery life, they may have a shittier screen, but it's the same fucking format. It's a portable computer with a touch screen and a rectangular enclosure. It's the same shit. If they can get that shit right at $100 or $200, I don't think that I'm entitled for thinking that Apple should get it right at six or $700, nor do I think I'm feeling entitled when I want my $700 device to not be fucking dead after, after 13 months. And you really do have to compare compare it to the cheaper devices. You do have to look at the fact that a $100 to $200 device will not have this flaw 13 or 14 months in. I don't think I'm being a dick or entitled with this. And again, everybody has the right to their opinion, but I mean, hey, when I read this, it's like, hello, grocery store. I bought these bananas two weeks ago with your guarantee they wouldn't turn brown in a week. Well, I want them to last two weeks like my friend's bananas, so give me new bananas. And SMBBD, you can take a wild guess with that. Th that's an acronym you're going to find all over Jess's ticket system as well as mine on occasion. But I digress. Um, I don't... I don't think expect, uh, expecting a phone to last 13 months again, there are lots of phones that last 13 months. I don't know what she's talking about with these magic bananas. If I buy a banana on Monday, very often by Wednesday, it's brown already. So, I mean... Bananas don't last two weeks very often. That's pretty rare if that happens, but it's actually very, very common for smartphones to not die at 13 months. In fact, it's actually an expectation amongst most consumers of these products that when they spend more than $70 on a smartphone, that it will last 13 months. This is a widespread expectation that is not being pulled out of our ass. It's something that is rather common 
in, in, in from, from customer expectations. And I would sincerely hope that this is not an expectation that would change because if we let Apple go with this, if we let Apple continue to say 350 bucks for an out of warranty replacement, that is going to be a refurbished board. That's going to be a refurbished board out of somebody else's crack phone that has oxidized joints. It's going to die. If we do that, we're really setting a precedent that not only are we going to pay top dollar for something that we don't need to pay top dollar for, but we're going to pay that top dollar. We're going to take it in the ass and we're going to like it. And I feel that that sets a really dangerous precedent. So, uh, yeah, that, that's my thought on it. I'm not exactly happy over this whole thing. Again, just one of the many, many reasons that I have absolutely no desire to own an Apple product ever again. Um, but yeah, and even if you love the products, even if you are a big fan of Apple products, you love the iPhone, you love the MacBook, you love the aesthetic, you love the design, you love the ergonomics, you love the interface, you love the ecosystem, even if you love everything about their products, this video is even more for you because if you love their products, you should want to see them do better. You should want to see them stand behind their products. If we set a precedent that it's okay to release an item that 13 months after release will develop oxidized joints that, are, that, that do not allow the device to function, that requires that you just buy a new one because they're going to tell you it can't be repaired, that's not going to help us at all in the future. That's not going to help encourage Apple to produce better products. That's not going to help Apple support their products more. And if you love their products, if you enjoy their products, you want to buy their products, I would suggest that you should be a part of helping make sure that their support, their R&D, and their, their manufacturing is done better than it is now. And it can be done better than it is now because, again, we're seeing it with those $100 Android phones. We're seeing it with the, the Huawei, Highway, whatever, however the fuck you pronounce it. We see it with the cheap Motorola. We see it with the cheap Samsung. We see it with the cheap HTC. All these other companies are able to get it right at 100 to 200 bucks. And I'm not saying they're as good as the iPhone when it comes to the processor, the screen, the battery life, all that. But this is basic, basic function. This is basic just launch. Longevity. Can you get the phone to have a touchscreen that works for 13 months? And this is something that is a basic expectation that everybody gets right at a cheap price. So for the love of God, will, can, can Apple figure out how to get this right? Uh, um, again, what do you guys think?